Good morning, everyone. I want to thank Dr. Lilly, Dr. Dillon, and the deans, and faculty, and staff for making this day possible and inviting me here to be part of it. I also want to thank all the family and friends in attendance to celebrate the graduates. And most importantly, I want to congratulate you, the graduating class of 2024, for being the reason we're here today. Right after I speak to you today, literally minutes, uh, I'm headed to the airport to see my second child uh, off to school for the first time. In exactly two years, I'll be a parent uh, on the other side of these chairs here in this podium, uh, watching my first child graduate. So naturally, that's got me thinking a little bit about what I'd want to share with my own kids uh, when they reach the milestone that you're at today, as well as what advice I could have used when I was sitting in your seats scarily about 26 years ago. These two trains of thought merged into what I'll share with you today. Four lessons informed by my own journey and what I've observed working with and studying hundreds of successful people at the tops of their respective fields. I do want to begin with a little dose of reality. A lot of the hard work in your life has been building to this moment, and many people have understandably made you think of this as the crowning achievement in your life. And without a doubt, your graduation today is a major accomplishment that deserves to be celebrated. But finishing this race, unfortunately, doesn't lead to a trip to the winner's podium. Instead, it places you at a new starting line. What you've done to get to this point is remarkable, but it's really what you do from here that's gonna define your life and your legacy. So before diving in, I also wanna be clear that my definition of success is not about having the biggest house, the most accolades, the greatest fame, or the most money. It's about making an impact on the world that each of you wants to make, fulfilling your potential, and doing so in your unique way. There are many people in this world who appear extraordinarily successful by superficial definitions and who are deeply unhappy. And there are people who appear to live simple and humble lives who are completely fulfilled. Don't hold yourself to anyone else's definition of success. As you pursue your vision of success, I hope these principles help you avoid some missteps and maybe accelerate your journey towards your goals. Lesson one, uncover your values. What do you value most in life? I know it's a simple question, but it's actually one that's not simply answered. My experience is very few people can clearly articulate their most deeply held principles. I identified my own list of personal core values over a decade ago and kept that list front and center on my desk to this day. I was in my 30s when I took this step and I really wished I had done it sooner because it was a major demarcation point in my life. Up to that point, I certainly had some meaningful accomplishments and even a modicum of success. However, everything you had just heard in my bio came after uh, those core values were introduced and I had that revelation. So what are core values? Again, we hear the term a lot, but we're not totally clear what it means. So simply stated, core values are your most deeply held non-negotiable principles. Consciously or subconsciously, they drive many of your most important decisions such as your chosen vocation, who you marry, and the community in which you choose to live. When you do things aligned to your values, you feel energized. When you do things that clash with your values, it drains your energy and you feel bad or out of place. Your core values are not aspirational traits. They're not slogans. When identified correctly, they describe who you are and who you've likely always been, and your parents could probably tell you the same. They're kind of like the instruction manual that you never received when you are born. If you can't clearly articulate your own personal core values, you certainly aren't alone, but you're kind of navigating life without a GPS. Because understanding these values is so transformational, I urge you to spend some time thinking about what it is that you value. It will provide the foundation for the most important decisions in your life, especially the ones I refer to as the big three. Who you choose as a spouse or life partner, your chosen career or your place of work, or where you choose to live and the people with whom you surround yourself. You need to get these right, and that's easier when you have core values to guide you. And so to help you, I'm actually gonna send each of you access to a course later this week for free that'll walk you through this process. And here you thought you were done with classes. But don't worry, it's just about an hour, but I highly recommend it. Finally, once you understand your values, don't compromise on them, even when it's easy or convenient. In a constantly changing world, 
where it's often simpler to follow the crowd and go along with what everyone else is doing, having a stable and unchanging foundation to anchor your decision making is really important. Let your values be your unwavering compass, guiding you with integrity and serving as an anchor to keep you steady in the storm of life that has changed. Upholding your values is always the right choice, even when it means standing alone. Lesson two, learn before you earn. All right, here's another, here's another tough truth. In your 20s, you're going to be underpaid and underappreciated, even when you do great work. I know, I, I did great work. I was underappreciated and underpaid. During this period, you're going to feel the need and the urge to jump from job to job in pursuit of more money or maybe a better title, especially when your peers show you how this has worked for them. What you need to do is keep top of mind that you're running a marathon, not a sprint. The reality is the arc of your success will depend much more on what you learn in your 20s and the relationships you build rather than how much money you earn or your job title. The most successful people I've met and studied focus the early part of their careers on honing their craft and becoming an expert that people seek out. They worked at the best companies, got themselves into the top training programs, and sought out and trained under the best mentors. Let me share a few specific examples. Jamie Dimon, the influential CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, was actually the protege of CEO Sandy Weil at American Express and Citigroup. Oprah Winfrey was mentored by Barbara Walters early in her career, and Walters provided guidance and inspiration that helped Oprah navigate and eventually dominate the media landscape. Steven Spielberg, who's arguably history's most famous director, was mentored by Sidney Scheinberg, an executive at Universal Studios who gave Spielberg his first acting job, directing job, and provided numerous opportunities that launched his career. Lin-Well Miranda was mentored by Steven Sodenheim, a legendary composer and lyricist. And finally, Chef Gordon Ramsay, who was mentored by Marco Pierre White, who was one of the most celebrated chefs in the UK, who taught him the importance of discipline and precision in the kitchen, which became the hallmarks of his own culinary style. I found about another 100 examples I could have shared here today, but you probably get the point. Odds are you won't do the things that define your life and your career in your 20s, and you also won't make a fortune unless you invent the next Facebook or Amazon. The problem is the probability of doing that is about equal to winning the lottery. And while I want you to dream big, I don't think it's practical advice to bet on winning the lottery. In your 20s, focus on finding work that engages you to the point that you're intrinsically motivated to learn more. It doesn't have to be enjoyable all the time, but it should feed your deep curiosities. Find a vocation, a company, or a leader who makes you want to get better. Give your all and truly hone your craft. Find great training programs and attach yourself to great mentors. Become vulnerable and coachable so that you can soak in everything those mentors have to offer you rather than being annoyed to be taught. Don't waste your energy being frustrated that your first job doesn't pay as much as you like or that your peers are taking better vacations. Channel that energy into learning and becoming an indispensable expert. This is what will make you invaluable, connected, and very well compensated later in your career. The most profound satisfaction often comes from patience and the wisdom to embrace delayed gratification. Lesson three, embrace the struggle. You're all here because you're smart, hardworking, and talented. Some of you have even made it to this point without needing to give your best or overcome significant obstacles. I speak from experience. Earlier in my life, I got by doing only what was needed and nothing more. The problem is that things don't come as easily in the real world. You will be tested in ways you're not prepared for, and you need to have the strength to withstand those tests. I don't think I really understood what I was capable of until I got knocked down a few times and figured out how to keep getting up. Again, many of your parents and teachers may not have set the right expectations here, preparing the path for you rather than preparing you for the path. Life is hard, and things won't always work out in your favor every time, or even most of the time. Even a dream job just feels like work some days. There will be stretches of weeks or months where work or life feels unbearable. The key is not to quit something just because it's challenging or you hit a rough patch. Quit when it's not something worth fighting for anymore. Struggling is part of growth, and resilience is what separates those who achieve their goals from those who don't. Your greatest achievements will likely come soon after your biggest appointments, and your character will be shaped and defined 
by your low points, not your high ones. Resilience actually doesn't come naturally. It's a muscle that needs to be developed and tested. Here's two simple ways to build that muscle. First, simply, stay physically active. Regular exercise improves your mood, reduces stress, increases energy, and it improves your sleep. It's difficult to rise to any challenge when your mind and body aren't fully prepared to meet you for it. Second, try to regularly put yourself in positions that are uncomfortable or even a bit scary. Ask that person out. Take a different route to work every so often. Try to get somewhere without using your GPS and get lost. Take a solo trip to a different country or city and you earn bonus points by going somewhere where English is not the dominant language. And last but not least, take opportunities to speak publi publicly, which is almost always uncomfortable at first. And actually, it's everyone's biggest fear in life. It ranks above death. There are small things you can do to stimulate challenging, unfamiliar, or even anxiety-inducing situations and prove to yourself that you can handle them. Finally, a big part of resilience is simply your mindset and focus. Resilience often requires accepting your new reality, even if it's less good than one you had before, even days or weeks ago. When things go wrong, you can lament the things beyond your control that are conspiring against you, or you can focus on what you can control, put one foot in front of the other, solve one problem at a time, and get back to making progress. Lesson four, and this may be the most important one. Don't, you won't regret the things that you did. Regret is a powerful force in life. It serves as both a reminder of our past decisions and a motivator for our future actions. And the truth is, when all is said and done, and especially towards the end of our lives, we regret the things we don't do far more than the things we did. Numerous studies over the years have backed this up with data. When you're all standing on the stage in my shoes in 26 years, or reflecting back at the end of your own life, the biggest regrets you're gonna have are the things you did not do. The person you never asked out, the business you never started, the trip you didn't take with friends or family, or that difficult conversation you were afraid to have with someone you loved or cared about. You won't always make the right decisions or get the answers you're looking for. More bats naturally lead to more hits and more strikeouts. But you'll never be left wondering what could have been. You just won't regret what you did with one significant exception. The same studies show but by far the most common regret in life is bullying others. The good news is that there just doesn't take much time or effort to be kind. When you embrace the opportunities in front of you and take chances, you'll live a life free from the weight of what ifs and you'll sprint across the finish line without any need to look back at what might have been. Having shared these lessons, I want to share one last story. When I mentioned to my daughter that I had been asked to give this speech, she asked me what I was going to talk about. So I told her that in case this opportunity ever presented itself, I had actually taken some notes over the year, and those notes ended up forming the basis of my talk today. Opportunities often arrive unexpectedly. It's usually a good idea to be ready for them and to plan to bring your A-game. And there's a famous story about this involving NBA legend Magic Johnson. At the beginning of Magic's career, he saw a father and son approach the Lakers teammate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and asked for an autograph. Kareem said no and walked away. Seeing the disappointment on the son's face, Magic walked over and kindly offered an autograph, saying, hey, maybe I'll be a great player one day to the kid. Over a decade later, when Magic's basketball career was cut short by HIV and he was trying to post, he piece his post-basketball life together, he launched a business career. And eventually, as part of that, he received a critical investment from a familiar face the father of the boy for whom Magic had signed the autograph. He remembered Magic's kindness that day. Over a decade later, he returned the favor. When you always bring your A-game and show kindness, it comes back to you in ways you could not imagine. It's so important to always put your best foot forward because you can't possibly know which acts and moments today will be crucial to your future tomorrow. To wrap things up, I'd like to share one of my favorite quotes which I believe encapsulates so much of what I've spoken about today. I actually first heard it in a yoga class about 20 years ago. And for years, I misattributed it to the yoga teacher when it's actually quite famous. So be careful how you attribute your quotes. That quote is, how we do anything is how we do everything. I can't think of a better motto to live by. I wish you each the best of luck as you venture out in the world 
and make your unique contribution. Thank you again, and congratulations to the class of 2024.